I'd like to have a conversation about human capital management. And, and uh, I want to go, go back in time, uh, maybe about 10 years back in time, and kind of build uh, on the expectation uh, curve, uh, starting with, let's say, virtual reality. You know, that was, that was kind of an in, innovation trigger. And uh, from there, a lot of uh, internal talent was um, valued differently. Uh, we were we were starting to use some of those unique technology tools to to build that that marketplace, and we raised the expectations with with uh, learning experience platforms, learning management systems, uh, and then there was an arrival of, of virtual assistants really fascinating and expectations were still growing uh the virtual assistants continued with uh, uh recruiting and eventually then there were a lot of hr human resource applications that came out consumer hr and then along came platform as a service uh where there was still a fair amount of it ownership on the premise side but uh various providers cloud like type providers came later but but uh i would say outsourced providers were more uh involved at that point and uh the voice of the employee was listened to but then uh, we started to see some flight there. A lot of freelance management systems came about. And as we looked back office, we started to look also at mid office. And so there were a lot of workforce type apps growing from that. And um, with, with companies going global, our expectations, our expectations were still rather high as we were looking at um, multi-country country payroll. It's very, very hard to do that by hand. So there were various apps and multi-country country payroll coming out of that. And so we, we were probably at our, our highest exciting expectation as far as continuous feedback of employee performance. And, and that was probably the peak of our inflated uh, expectations. And so then we started to trail off. Uh, we were trying to move into machine learning. Uh, I'm talking now about five years into all this growth. And um, surprisingly enough, even though there were conversations about employee wellness, uh, a lot of a lot of companies weren't uh, weren't uh, that committed to it. Reward systems were then considered, and and you know, <laughs> the expectations were continuing to drop. You know, it's it's like uh, employees weren't weren't uh, excited by what was happening. So some other techies came out, and strategists came out, and there was some workforce planning and modeling going on. And um, we started to do a fair amount of, of uh, video recruiting. I remember uh, one of the jobs I had, uh, everything was negotiated uh, video. All right, so um, that led to a potential turnaround in how we were managing human, human capital, where we were we were looking at talent analytics. Uh, there was some frightening statistics of people who uh, were getting jobs just to get training. And once they uh, got the company funded training that they needed to move on, they moved on. So companies found themselves in the training business, whether they liked it or not. Um, and so we were in a trough of disillusionment and we had to turn that around so 
new innovations came out from, from this trough. We started to do a little more onboarding. Companies were spending a, a bit more time to get employees aware of, of what was expected on this uh, new job, as well as they really wanted to hear from the employees what did they want to gain from that. And so uh, I would say uh, relationship management systems evolved out of that. Relationship management systems about, about all of that. Now we started to drill down a little into line management as well. But the ta talent management continued to grow. We haven't we haven't um, we haven't come back to the peak of ten years ago peak uh, uh, of expectations from employees that we had ten years ago. But we're we're on the way. You know, it's leveling out a little. And so where we are now is there are a lot of a cloud uh, human core, uh, human capital management systems out there. So the best way to really understand what's happening with with uh, with cloud human capital management is, is to look at the, the larger firms, you know, the ones with with, for instance, uh, uh, a thousand employees, and you begin to see that that there, there are kind of three big camps here. There's there's uh, administrative human resources where software is managing the org structures it's it's it's, it's dealing through, throughout the life cycle of the employee with various tools um there's a bit of of role-based self-service going on uh freeing up the uh, upper hr to do other things um uh, and and of course included within this is benefit and, and uh, payroll admin now you know, you can include, you can include other things like absent, absence management, health and safety administration, and various other evaluated added capabilities. But it, you know, it depends on what kind of budget you have. Now, I'm a consultant, so I look a lot on the talent management side, and there's various apps and software companies that that are uh, very active in onboarding and uh, recruiting, performance management, career and succession planning are included in there. And of course, uh, learning and skills development. I've, I've spent 30 years as a professor, so I'm, I'm kind of focused on that side of things. And then of course, they're integrated ser services. When you look at HR, like uh, policies, direct access to policies. I'm, I'm working with an organization now where, where if an employee is interested in a particular policy, there's a link that you can click and it you know, the details of that policy are there or the exact words of the policy are there. So uh, very exciting things going on. There, there are a lot of, of companies that are in this game. Uh, SAP is one that you may or may not be f familiar with. Workday, uh, Darwin Box, People Strong, or others. Uh, Oracle has uh, a Fusion cloud, uh, cloud service in uh, human capital management. Zing uh, HR is uh active in this uh, in this uh, space and and there are others cornerstone is one of the last ones i remember looking at last week so uh very exciting th uh, things happening in uh in the human capital space so uh we can't lose sight of the fact that no matter how much we are into uh, generative ai and artificial intelligence but we we still need uh, human capital. There's a certain amount of, of processing in the way that humans uh, make decisions that uh, is still yet to be modeled. So we have to continue to see the value in our workforce. Uh, so uh, that's what this conversation is about. Uh, I am I am Dr. Hamilton, the, the uh, senior uh, or, or the principal consultant uh, of Hamilton's solutions. Thank you for listening.